YouTube, what's going on you guys? This is your boy Jay Darrell stepping back into the sanctuary giving you laughter, realness, and reality. Before we get into this video, go ahead and thumb this video up. Make sure you leave a comment about the video and the episode and make sure you share on all social media sites as well as follow me on all social media sites. Again, this is Jay Darrell for review for VH1's Black Ink Crow Season 6, Episode 8, The Return of O. Shit. Alright, we start this video off with Ted calling C. C. the Swiss guy back in Atlanta at the mansion. That's who he, she, he's been staying with for the whole time. Basically, the whole time while he's in Atlanta. I don't know why he haven't found him a place yet, but uh, that's their business. I ain't got time to deal with that. But he receives a FaceTime from Ted. Ted tells C. that basically Alex got arrested and we need to go ahead and bail him out. Um, but then that thing, so C's is begging Scott to come back. You need to get back to, uh, Eek 123, uh, 123, Eek 113. <laughs> Eek 113 because basically they still don't have a manager. Um, the cast meet up for basically cooking lessons, um, in regards, basically a filler, um, episode type thing. But they meet up for basically cooking lessons, basically keep their mind off and not having a manager so they won't fight and get into any other drama, which is basically put on by... Uh, Miss Kip. Uh, next um scene we get into. Sky goes on a phone interview. She's back in um New York. She goes to the shop. Of course, ain't no money now. I'm pretty sure probably nobody booked. But she has basically posted ads everywhere, basically in search for a basically manager for Ink Ink One Two. Ink 113. I don't know why I'm going to see Ink 113. But Ink 113. So she can get her behind. Basically, it's get Sky back to Atlanta. So she ain't never got to come back to Harlem ever again. So she puts up ass, does these uh, basically hilarious phone interviews. Some people hang up in the face. Some people basically entertain. It's almost like they put up a screen and say, hey, we need extras to interview for this spot. Um, basically, look like Sky's actually doing work. But that's basically what that is. So, Walt and Jada goes on a date to a erotic poetry slam type deal. Basically, on a date. So, he's um, basically running against her. They make an eye contact. They get close together. And out of nowhere, we hear Walt's name being called. So, he goes and writes this poem about Jada. And basically, wins her over in a end. Basically, end the night with... Um, Going, renting a bike and riding all over the city, which I think it was a little cute thing for Walter. And is it me? Every time Walter looks, he looks high as hell. I'm not sure when Walter is sober in the scene and when he's high or not drunk off of Hennessy. It's like, it's like every time he gets on the camera, I, in order for me to do what I gotta do, I need to take Hennessy. But nice little thing in those regards. So, uh, this everybody's up at um, 8113. And that everybody's laughing and playing around and, excuse me, and joking about uh, Jada and Walter's date. Basically drilling her and uh, making passes at her while Walt is sitting there after he made the announcement that he actually likes her. And so they're talking and everything and they're talking about the date and laughing and talking about um, the costumes that Jay should do a contest for the famous Ink 113 Halloween um, party that they always do every year for Halloween. And in walks Bay. Bay has this simmery, like simmer, worried look on her face. And basically, they asked her, Bay, what's going on? I mean, what's going on with you? She's like, first of all, I'm not alright. And basically, lets everybody know about her situation, which we knew last season. And it's kind of spilling over to now because we learned on last week's episode that she, her dad found her mom on Facebook and threatened to kill her and things like that. So, Bay is worried. Bay has not heard from her mother in a week, which is not like her. They talk every day. So, basically, right now, she is hysterical and worried about her mom that possibly her dad could have found where she stayed at, got over to her, kidnapped her, cured her, beat her, done something. She, Bay basically needs to get and trying to find a way to get to Korea to check on her mom to see if her mom's all right. I bet you either... She gonna make it to Korea and everything is fine, or it's like her mom changed the number, it's just not answered because she don't trust who it might be. In that sense, um, so basically they plan a tattoo with on and basically donate will be donating all the seeds to Young Bay to send her off to Korea. In that sense, so everybody's loving on her and sympathizing with her, and she feels good. In this sense, it's like we get a sense to see that everybody likes 
who they're working with and basically really did not like Melody because I don't think they would have done the same thing for her. Kind of in that sense. They probably done it just because she's human, but as far as the sympathy they show young baby versus sympathy they would show young um, Melody is two different types of sympathy, and I just don't think they would have done it with her. So you kind of see that they're riding and rocking with who they're working with. We actually got a good cast um, chemistry in Ig 113. So, uh, C's basically spending time with his, with the mother of his child, aka baby mama, which she did not want to be called that, and she, um, also spending time with uh, Cheyenne. Cheyenne is, I think, one of his older daughters that he has with her. Um, and they're basically at a little miniature golf site, and they're playing golf, basically bonding, spending time with her. They're actually getting along without calling each other names, going at it, and making sure that C's is in and out of court and locked up. So, within that time, he basically asked Shine, baby, how was school? How are you doing? And she kind of is like, it's okay. It's good. And then, of course, the mother, like all mothers want to do, let's spill the tea. Let's tell them what's really going on. Everything ain't all good. And it's like, tell your dad what's really going on. And she's like, I'm being bullied because of my weight. And I was like, okay, pause. So, okay, we getting, get, we getting here some awareness about bullying. We get um, some awareness about self-esteem. We get awareness about basically how you look. And in this scene, I, you can see the pureness of our heart. You can see the pureness of the situation. You can see that it sheds light on an African-American male being in his daughter's life, being in his child's life, getting along all the while ta uh, attacking some issues that our youth sometimes deal with in today's society and generation. Um... It's 2018, so it's kind of crazy that we're still talking about bullying. Because bullying, when I was growing up, I can say I was being bullied. But it takes two to bully. And the reason why I say it takes two, first of all, it takes one to try to talk down on me. And two, it takes me to give, any, give it any energy for it to affect me in any sense. Which it never did. It was like, okay, oh, you gay, you this, you sugar, you this. Okay. And your thoughts and the same people that were calling me names, I ended up getting tea on them with the same niggas on the football team fucking each other. So at the end of the day, who's gay? At the end of the day, who has a problem? And I'm like, okay. It never affected me. It's always in the back of my mind, like, what is really your deal? I was always the class I was always the class favorite. I always was dressed to the T and I always had females on my tip. So it's like was really going on. But like I said, it takes two to bullet. It takes one to throw the hate towards you and it takes two, which is you, to accept um what's going on and allow that to affect you. And the only way it affects you if you have self esteem problems. I never had self esteem. I always wore them. I always had my hair cut every two weeks. I always had nice shoes, nice clothes. My family was always well off. Even not always well off the sense that we had just money, but we was well off as far as housing, clothes. I mean, it was there. We had lights turned off here and there, but we was always well off. Nothing to complain over. Nothing to go in school and be like, my family's this. I don't have nothing. I was always good. Always well off. Section leader. Um, I was the, always the best dresser. Years roll within my band, so it was like. It was really nothing. I'm just be like, okay. So it's it still kind of sad to me that in 2018 we still deal with the effects of bullying. But at the end of the day, when you look at the picture, only thing she would probably need to have or have more of is self esteem. Because at the end of the day, she's not an ugly child. Her weight is balanced for her height and where she is, and she is literally beautiful. And I can see at the end of the day, um, if I'm ugly and I'm fat, at the end of the day, I'm paid because. My dad owns several shops around the state and on VH1 every week. So, that will always be my defense on the top of owning being big and sexy. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, when she grew up and uh, get to herself, she's not an ugly girl at all. So, it's like, all she need to do... Get herself together, get her heart together, get herself seen together. But it kind of looked like it wasn't affecting her as much as it was when she said bully. But I guess people, I, I wouldn't say bully. I would just say people are talking about her and throwing hate her at because they're probably jealous because they know who her father is and what he obtains. That's what I think. But anyway, I could be wrong. So, in the next uh, the next scene, sees me to what as, as we know, um, sees all the way from Atlanta to um, bail Alex out of jail due to 
parking tickets that he slid to the side and never took care of. And that's why when he was arrested in the 96th episode, they said he had warrants in two different uh, areas. So, bails him out, basically um, meets up with him in 8113 with a bucket of cleaning supplies, making him wash the windows, making him scrub outside of the deck, and basically giving him a life lesson, basically picking his head, hair and basically letting him know that, hey, I'm with you, but you're a young African-American man with a child that depends on you, making careless mistakes that can possibly land you in jail with your background, with your felony background, with your parents' background. Anything they can find you for, they're going to get you. We're living in a world where we have Trump as president, who possibly anything as far as an African-American man being um, consolidated in incarceration or shot or arrested and, or just beaten out of nowhere is what we are and what we're dealing with in today's society. So making careless mistakes that could possibly land you in jail, you have a gift, you have a talent. Get, dive into that and I need you to be a better you was basically what this scene with this segment was about we can see two we can call and break bring to the light of two African American successful African American males coming together one high and one low and coming together and getting and basically picking each other head let you know hey brother I'm with you instead of black on black activity and crimes that basically I could say black is doing a good job at bringing a lot of things that can possibly Brought to the wayside that bring it to light with um, Constellation African American man, males. I mean, brother and brother coming together, bailing each other out, coming to get, I mean, just coming to each other's rescue. I, I can say that's exactly why Black Ink will continue to do more and more seasons and people will continue to watch and they break numbers. So, shout out to the cast of Black Ink. So, in that um, sense, uh, Sky brings the new manner to the uh, Black, um, the Black Ink 113. Um, annual part, um, Halloween part. So everybody just turning it up. Everybody drinking Hennessy, and it's also that tattoo with thon. So we can go ahead and make sure that Bay gets the career to check on her mom off, and hopefully bring her back to the states. So with that being said, everybody's turning up. Everybody's getting tattoos. I mean, everybody's yelling and screaming. Basically, the typical Black Ink Halloween or Black Ink party that they either throw every Thursday or every Friday. I think that's what Sky says. So, in walks Sky. Sky has to be all extra in line and brings in the candidate, which is the manager and trainer that she hired so for Ink 113 so she can get back to Atlanta where she resides in her Susan Homemaker lifestyle is. But, um, basically, in a sense, um, she introduced us, so she introduced the CC's life and everything. So while she's in training, she takes it upon herself to. Uh, she actually was doing good, uh, mingling with with everybody, mingling and make sure they wanted tattoos, basically getting money in the shop, which what she's supposed to do and what she's used to do. Where she made her mistake was when she found the person going to the back instead of introducing herself or have Sky and C's introduce her. Hey, this is new. It's, this is going to be the new manager. She's the manager in training and having everybody. Hey, I'm Sky. Hey, I'm this. Hey, I'm that. And have I introduced, she basically goes back there. Uh, hey, are you working? You did your tattoo? You doing this? Uh, we need to get this money. Uh, she wants things. Are you are you available? Shit outside. And everybody looking at her like, bitch. First of all, who are you? Um, where you come from? And what's your title? Why? Who are you? And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Hi, I'm X Y Z. I'm the manager in training, and we're gonna get this money. Basically, pulling orders already. First of all, Bay is going through what she's going through. This is her gig to get her to Korea. And second of all, she's been tattooing all night. The cast has been tattooing all night. And you coming in addressing orders in a very nasty type of way. And first of all, you did not introduce yourself. This is the type of crowd that you do not play with. And that you basically is the type of crowd that if you don't make your first impression noticeable and valuable, they're going to write you off. For the rest of the time you're there. And basically they're not going to stop until you either quit or fire. So she made her wrong. So she's going off at the mouth and doing this. And basically looking at her like. Uh, first of all don't talk to me. First of all who are you? Coming into my face. You're gonna, you're gonna, you basically need to get your tone corrected. And you need to get it right. When you're approaching me. So you're going off at the mouth. Well, if you're not ready to make money. Are you ready to make money? We got to get this money. Are you ready to set up? And John is like. Like. And then Jada gets up and like, sweetheart, you you get the, you make the money when you're ready to make the money. We're going to go. She, by the way, the manager's still talking. So at the end of the day, they grabs her. and they, I mean, they basically going at it. 
And like, you know, babe just going her and then Janet trying to come in this in and y'all already know Donna got her back because every time Donna get into a situation, um, Bae jumps in for so they all remember in the back and basically Sky stopped the situation, makes Bay go out uh, in the front and take care of the manager in the back, basically get her to apologize. So they go out in the front, talk, they cross differences, Bay lets her know what's going on and how you stepped to me it was not cool, I was not having, I'm stressed out, this is my um, event to give me to curl due to some situation I'm going to. The way you came out was not right. So she apologized. They could make plans. They come back in and they parted. And walks the black uh, Reaper. The Green Reaper. So he's fl basically, basically flirting, flirting with um, Sky and basically making amends. And they parted out of nowhere. She makes. So um, she says something about. Um, um, that's getting close to getting make some type of sexual reference. And she's like, uh, it's gonna take more to scare me. So he pulls out the mask and it's oh shit. I'm like, oh shit, it's oh shit. I'm like, what are you doing back in black ink? And then we go into what's gonna happen into next week. So next week we'll find out why he's back, um, how he's back and what's going on with his relationship. So with that being said, I'm getting ready to walk out. And for all you people like, hold on, did you have that on the next video? All of my videos for this week are pre-recorded and all basically was recorded within the same day. And I'm just getting getting those out to you as they're being edited and uploaded. So don't got the trip. I'm not nasty and not dirty. So don't ever don't try me. So you can stop the thinking right there. But anyway, this is your boy Jay Debrero. Stepping out of the sanctuary. We give you laughter. Realness and reality. I will see you on guys on the next video. Make sure you thumb this video up, share it on all social media sites, follow me on all social media sites, and subscribe to my channel if you're not have not already. Alright? See you guys.